Hey, my name is Rachel, glad you could make it. I'm starting a 28 day meal plan outlined in the book Fiber Fueled by Dr. Bull Squise. I can't pronounce his last name. In the book, he says to call him Dr. B. So this is a medical doctor. He's a gastroenterologist. He uh, promotes plant-based diet for healing gut issues for his patients. And he recently came out with a book. This is a whole food plant-based meal plan. It's mostly gluten-free. There are options to make it not gluten-free. That's towards the end of it. I'm still waiting to see on all that. Also, sorry, my voice sounds like this. I have been yelling and chanting a lot lately. My voice is shot. But yeah, I mean, the reason I got this book in general is I've been trying to heal my gut issues for years. I've honestly had gut issues my whole life, starting with eczema, something I still deal with. Uh, when I was in like second grade, I had acid reflux randomly with like, I have to take medicine for it. And for most of my life, having like joint pain and just like a lot of inflammatory pain without like a really clear root cause. Also all of this, I know people like to comment saying, you have these problems because you're vegan. Nope, this was all on an omnivorous diet. I became vegan when I was 20 years old and by the time I was 19, I was having some really bad health issues. It's not entirely because of an omnivorous diet. You can have gut damage from environmental pollutants, from medications. If you have an unhealthy gut, you're gonna have all sorts of health problems. But yeah, essentially when I was 19, I was having like horrible chronic pain. Um, my depression, anxiety were really bad. Also mood issues can be related back to gut health. I was also struggling with an eating disorder for a lot of my teen years and that can really disrupt your gut health. You know, I was 19, really sick, uh, seeing all these different doctors trying to figure out what was wrong. I got like a fibromyalgia diagnosis and was taking medication for that and it like sort of helped the pain. Like, my depression was awful, I was just in horrible pain. I would notice like I felt like I couldn't eat anything, I would get really nauseous when I ate things. I just felt like I was really falling apart um, and then I saw a functional medicine doctor. I did some like allergy testing as well as this like big elimination diet we discovered I have like high sensitivity to oats to rye barley like most grains essentially so I was not eating those foods for a long period of time they were trying to introduce them it was just like I know I stopped seeing that doctor and that dietitian they were kind of getting scammy like I felt like they were just constantly trying to get me to buy more supplements from them and I was like okay well I feel like good enough if I just like am gluten-free and like kind of avoid oats most of the time and they diagnosed me with leaky gut which was you know causing the sensitivities or just you know Know, related to it since then I'd still like I would try to eat oats from time to time or like other things I supposedly had sensitivities to and like yeah I would get flare-ups like I was always kind of taking anti-inflammatories and just getting like pain or feel like I couldn't work out a lot and my joints would hurt and like that's kind of just been an ongoing thing with me of like a lot of, also like why I got into medical medium just trying to like figure out how to make my gut better but for the most part I've been vegan and gluten-free for like the past five years but in addition to like being gluten-free avoiding most grains like I feel like millet and rice has been the only things I can eat and I don't have any sort of symptoms whether that's like skin related like eczema rosacea or like increase in body aches headaches or like a worsening even like I can do notice a worsening in my my mood issues as well like depression and anxiety can act up if you're familiar with my channel you know I've been following medical medium advice for like I don't know like a year and a half and then I was kind of getting more into introducing other foods I was just not really seeing the results I had wanted I feel like I'd gotten on a pretty restricted diet where I wasn't eating like lentils and fats very much and like was eating very little grains and just based on my research from plant-based doctors like Dr. Greger and like Dr. McDougall they you know all were advocating for grains and legumes and more healthy fats and I was noticing improvements with my digestion doing that in terms of like I feel like I'd had mostly had like loose stools since when I initially uh, got that fibromyalgia diagnosis which was like debunked I don't have that diagnosis anymore and again I don't have allergies to gluten or grains I have a sensitivity in fiber fuel, he did discuss it and uh, it turns out I have the kind of like gluten grain sensitivity that's like the least understood by science like with joint pain mood issues eczema like those symptoms are the ones that like they don't really quite know exactly what sort of reaction is going on anyway all that to say I'm doing this meal plan it's not he's not saying that in 28 days your gut problems will be completely fixed but it's more like a jump start like the main pillars of uh, what dr. B says about gut health is like for one eating like a really wide variety of plant foods he's saying having like 30 different plant foods a week you know so that's like nuts seeds legumes grains fruits vegetables all that and I know my variety has is bad you know he goes into like lifestyle in terms of like getting enough sleep and advocates for not eating after dinner just like having like 13 hours fasted from like dinner to breakfast the next day it's a really great book I recommend it I have the ebook 
book version of it otherwise I'd be holding it up. His main pillar thing is called like F goals. It's like an acronym and F is for fruit, especially berries and fermented foods. G is for greens and grains. O are for omega-3 super seeds. A is for aromatics like onions and garlic. L is for legumes and S is for sulforaphane, broccoli sprouts and other cruciferous veggies. So in this 28 day meal plan, there are foods like oats, which is, you know, I know like a sensitivity food for me, but I'm going to try to eat them and see what happens as well as sourdough bread, which I don't even know the last time I had regular bread. The book, he says like, you know, if you have a sensitivity, it's not about eliminating it forever. Like you eliminate it for short term to make sure if you have a sensitivity or not. And then he says to have moderate amounts of it while you're healing your gut in these other ways. And then you're able to eat these foods and hopefully fix your sensitivity to these foods, which is like what I've been after for so dang long. He also does include soy and corn. I know I previously was staying away from those when I was following the medical medium guidelines. I do notice I have a slight sensitivity to corn, but for soy, I don't believe I have any sensitivity to soy. Also, I'm not having celery juice throughout all of this. I've kind of been like experimenting with not having celery juice and seeing how I feel. And I don't know, I don't really notice a huge difference when I have it. And I just, I'd rather focus on the foods I'm eating than juice. We'll see, we'll see what happens. This 28 day thing, could be a disaster that I cut early because I feel super sick. Only way to find out is to do it. So this is going to be my week one. So I'm going to show you everything that I eat during this as well as catch up with you at the end to just to see how it's going for me. Right now it is day one and this each week has a full shopping list as well as like pantry staples to get for the future weeks. So I did a very large grocery haul yesterday. I had to get a lot of the staples. So it was a pretty expensive choice trip I assume it will be less expensive in the coming weeks because I'll have like a lot of, I had to buy a bunch of different spices I didn't have and like those can really add up and then he says once you have your groceries he recommends before the week begins that you're starting to uh, take a day to do a bunch of meal prep and he has specific recipes from the week that he recommends you meal prep so I was doing some of that last night and this morning the recipes are easy to follow truly like there's nothing crazy so far that I've done and from what I've sampled from tasting it just like after it comes out of the oven before I put it away is like everything's really good. Also with this, I'm gonna keep taking my same supplements. I take B12, vitamin D3, and I take curcumin. And lately I've been taking zinc and sovereign silver just for extra immunity protection during the pandemic. And enough of me talking, here it is. Everything that I've eaten this week. Day one breakfast, super seedy oatmeal and lemon ginger tea. It's perfectly adequate. We'll give it a six and a half out of 10 lunch this is two servings it'll be split here is my one serving mixed it with the orange tahini dressing that's like an eight out of ten salad right there day one dinner is plant-powered polenta ragu got all sorts of veggies in here i got like eggplant and zucchini and tomatoes got some parsley and oregano i've definitely never made polenta before i've only ever eaten it a handful of times it's fine it's not my favorite it's not my favorite kind of flavors i really like the polenta i mean it's like salty i'd give this a six out of ten i don't think i would like make this for myself ever but it's fine breakfast this is the creamy coconut pudding with pineapple this is a chia pudding it's actually really good. I normally hate chia pudding. 7 out of 10. This is day two, the wild biome super soup for lunch. There's wild rice in there, kale. Hmm. It's fine. Would I lust after the soup? No, but I'll give it a 6 out of 10. It's perfectly adequate. Dinner, tempeh tacos. That's tempeh and lentils underneath these greens and tomato onions olives, all that good stuff, and then a creamy cilantro dressing. Gonna be tricky. These are very loaded. Oh, okay. Mmm, that was good. Seven or eight out of ten, honestly. Breakfast with the superfood smoothie with very good sweet potato toast. This is almond butter and blueberries. This smoothie has kiwi, strawberries, bananas, spinach, broccoli sprouts, peanut butter, hemp seeds. It's like peanut buttery and tangy, which is kind of weird. Six and a half out of 10, I guess. I'm not really used to having like peanut butter and seeds in my smoothies. I'm used to just being like fruit and veggies, so it's a little weird. Okay, let's try this toast. I really like this. Eight out of 10. Lunch, this is the Muhammara sandwich. So it has leftover Muhammara dip, just made from like red peppers and walnuts. It's amazing, I meal prepped it. 
and there's spinach and roasted Italian medley, which has like a whole bunch of stuff like zucchini and eggplant, all roasted and meal prepped, as well with a bit of fresh spinach and sourdough bread. Eight out of 10. Oh my God, I love bread. Dinner, we have nourishing tomato noodle soup and a salad of the leftover supercharged roasted roots, some lettuce, and the oil-free orange dressing from uh, the salad the other day. I feel like I know what this salad will taste like. It's basically, you know, seven out of 10. It's cool. And the soup, I will admit, I did already try it while I was cooking it. It has like tofu, rice noodles, tomato, a lot of that miso broth I made. Nine out of 10, maybe nine and a half out of 10. I will make this for the rest of my life. It is so good. Breakfast, again, is the super seedy breakfast porridge. So I already know how this tastes, but I put uh, strawberries in it and more blueberries. Seven out of 10. Lunch is the leftover tempeh tacos made into a taco salad. So we all know this is good. It has that cilantro dressing. Eight out of 10, nine out of 10 maybe. It's wonderful, delicious. Dinner, this is pesto. Pasta. The pesto is made of like arugula and walnuts, which is interesting. And there's also some of the leftover roasted Italian medley, the eggplant zucchini mix. This is multiple servings. It's refreshing. It's a weird kind of pesto. Six and a half out of 10. It's not my favorite, but it'll do. Having the very good sweet potato toast again, but I decided to supercharge two of them, which is in the, the recipe book by adding some cinnamon, some unsweetened coconut flakes and hemp seeds. Seven out of 10, really good and happy about this breakfast. This is again, that same daily salad with the tahini orange dressing and then sourdough toast with the mukamara dip. So these are both things I've had before. Seven out of 10. Mm, I love that dip. I have so much of that dip left. I don't know what I'm gonna do. No, no, eight out of 10. This is the back pocket stir fry. It has a whole bunch of veggies in here. We got broccoli and carrots and bok choy. And it's served with some cooked quinoa. The sauce is like tamari and rice wine vinegar and sesame oil. Like six and a half out of 10. I don't know, it's a veggie stir fry. I'm not that excited about it, but it's good. Breakfast is the superfood smoothie bowl with crispy oat granola. I'd say that's a nine out of 10. It's so good with the granola. This granola recipe is awesome. For lunch, we have the leftover pesto pasta from the other day, and then this down and dirty kale salad. It looks so good. There's like almond butter, avocado, tamari. Oh my God. This could be a 10 out of 10, maybe nine out of 10. I don't know. I don't know what a 10 out of 10 salad is, but this is amazing. Lentil noodle pasta. I still find it's leftovers. Like just not my favorite dish in general, but whatever, like six out of 10. Is that what I gave it before? Maybe a five. The curry tofu bok choy served with brown rice. I've made better curries than this. I don't think I would use this sauce recipe again, but I like the veggies in it. And it's also really spicy, a little too spicy for me. I'll give this a six out of 10, I guess. This is gluten-free pancakes. Um, I made some with wild blueberries in the batter, some plain, and then I have some strawberries and maple syrup to go with it. And just so you know, this is the flour that I used. It is primarily made with beans, which is so cool. Bonzo beans, potato starch, tapioca flour, sorghum flour, fava bean flour, and it looks like it worked very well. Let's try it. I'm just gonna get it plain first, just to see it. It's good, I mean, they're a little gummy. It's usually kind of expected with gluten-free flour. Let's get this with a strawberry, with some syrup. Mm, oh, that's really good. Give it a seven out of 10. They're perfectly adequate pancakes. Don't think I'll be able to eat all of these. It made quite a few pancakes, but I'm sure I can save them for tomorrow. Lunch is the leftover back pocket stir fry. I already had this before. There's still quite a lot left. Still tastes great. All right, this is day seven dinner, and this is mushroom risotto. I made my own risotto. I've never made risotto in my whole life. And I made this with just short grain brown rice. That is really good. I've only had risotto a few times, like at restaurants or something. Honestly, this could be a nine out of 10. 
and that was week one of my fiber fueled plan um, i didn't film like little snacks i had there are some like snack recipes in the book i didn't really do that except for the granola sometimes i ate like a bowl of granola with some almond milk uh, but for mostly for snacks i just ate fruit mainly strawberries and pineapple yeah that's just kind of like what i like to have as snack um i also had that ginger lemon tea pretty much every day and along in the morning i always have like water with lemon juice some ginger powder and a bit of like maple syrup just to like hydrate me and the ginger for gut health which is something i was already doing with the oats i could tell right away it gave me a moderate headache so having, you know, low level headaches is something I've dealt with for many years. And that's also just related to like the gut health and inflammation. But yeah, I could see that my headaches worsened after I ate the oats, like pretty much right away. Then throughout the week, yeah, they, it was getting kind of moderate to severe at some times with the headaches, especially when I added in the sourdough bread and the quinoa, which is something I react to as well. But then the headaches, um, they have started to get better just really really late into the seven days i noticed they started to go down a bit so that was really interesting to me um i thought it would just keep getting worse and worse but yeah it just kind of it ramped up and then it just kind of stayed at this place and then it has slowly started to go down a bit to a milder headache which is really exciting for me because in the past when i've eaten oats it just gets worse and worse and worse and worse and worse and then the pain is all over my body and i wasn't noticing severe joint pain or any really joint pain this week what i'm most surprised in is with my like eczema and like skin redness issues so i mean i'm wearing foundation in these videos but before this week started i was having you know redness in my face which is something that kind of goes up and down with me by the end of the week i feel like my skin is like has the least redness it's had in quite a while i have one little pimple here i don't know if you can see but i get this right before i start my period i always get a pimple on one of my cheeks so i'm not attributing that to my diet because the rest of my skin is looking great the biggest thing is with my hands so i get eczema like between fingers and it's something that kind of goes like on and off but it's like pretty much always there and has been that's something that like came up when i started doing medical medium like i had eczema when i was really little and like randomly but the finger thing is something that started with medical medium which i can't really explain fully but throughout this week it like dried out more than it like ever has it was kind of uncomfortable with how dry it came but it felt like it was like healing being dry because it stopped itching because the thing is i would get little bumps they would itch a lot it would get red and then you know irritated then it would kind of calm down then come back and this it like really dried out and now like still i can see a little bit of like the skin is like flaking off but like it's not red um, i'm not getting any new bumps and that is what's most surprising with this i was so afraid doing this like eating all these new grains that i would just get a huge eczema flare my skin would get really red i would get all this pain over my body because that's what has happened in the past i don't know i've to it's it's been way better than it has been and this is only week one so that's really really exciting i think incorporating all these different vegetables just things i wouldn't normally eat and having a big variety in my diet has been really helpful as well as like eating a lot more omega-3s you know more fats definitely eating higher fat this week i didn't think it made me feel sluggish or anything it felt good i felt satisfied with my meals it was so cool to make all these different recipes and yeah there's some i definitely like more than others but there's some recipes like i want to keep those around forever like that like nourishing tomato soup like that's i'm obsessed with that and that risotto last night was so amazing like yeah i can see this would be like really overwhelming if you were you know had like a regular work week and you're going in but you know i'm staying at home so definitely more doable like this and i'm not someone who like loves to cook but i I don't know i found this enjoyable the recipes really weren't that complicated it's just kind of a lot of cooking but there is a considerable amount of prep you can do yeah i know i thought i would get really annoyed with all the cooking but it's been i don't know somewhat relaxing in a way as far as my mood i'm not really seeing any changes in my mood this far you know improved gut health can improve your mood but yeah i haven't really noticed a change also i mean this is a very chaotic time in the world so any emotions i'm having that are like unpleasant they seem pretty warranted as far as my digestion had a little bit of bloating nothing uncomfortable but it's also like there's the i'm changing my eating and this has also been kind of like the week leading up to my period which i normally get a little bloated anyway going to the bathroom still i'm having you know looser stools which is something that's pretty normal for me there have been certain days i'm definitely going a lot more 
more but this is something that kind of happens before this as well like you know my body's adjusting to eating all these different foods so I'm not surprised but I'm not like it's not uncomfortable I'm not like in pain or running to the bathroom desperately like it, it's okay I have decided to continue with this plan since things are going so well I am taking today as a day off before starting week two getting my groceries together finishing up some leftovers that I have and then doing the meal prep for week two you do make quite a lot of food in this you know most of the recipes are more than one serving and it's they're not always telling you to use leftovers like some days the meal is like leftover this but a lot of times it isn't you know I can eat big servings of things like I'm definitely like a volume type of eater like I can eat a lot of food I can really put it away for someone who has like a lot smaller appetite I could definitely see how you'd be left with like a lot of leftovers and I feel like if that's the case then just kind of like extend a few days to finish up your food before starting week two I don't see how there'd be any issue with that or you could always try to like freeze things and have it for later some frustrations in this for the amount of broth you need like it tells you to prep like one thing of the biome broth but you need more than that like I had to make two luckily it's really not that hard to make that broth and I've really liked it also something with this so this does incorporate you know oil which in the book he does say you know like oil is refined food it's not like the healthiest food but he says you know eat like 90% whole plant foods and 10% you know can be more processed things but I was finding in certain recipes I kind of make it as is and then I would seeing like oh, I think next time I'll make it with about half the oil it says or try it with no oil like one of the second time I made the biome broth the original recipe does Say to use like two tablespoons of olive oil which I just think is really unnecessary and I made it again without the olive oil it still tasted great it wasn't like sticking like it's soup so I think moving forward if there's something that doesn't seem like it needs as much oil I won't use it just because you know it's refined food it's not like doing anything great for my gut health same thing goes with salt he does use quite a bit of salt in this like more than I'm used to and that's I think I imagine if someone's like a full omnivore standard American diet and then they do this like they want to make sure that the recipes taste really good to someone who's like not used to eating like low salt low oil and all that so I think moving forward again like I'll use less salt than it has or maybe just not use salt taste it and then decide at the end if it needs any salt because otherwise it's just you know extra sodium which isn't great for your like heart health and just unnecessary there are some things I thought were a little too salty in my opinion I'd say so far so good week one was definitely a success and I'm excited for week two to try new things I hope this was helpful for you. If you're doing fiber fueled plan, I'd love to hear about your experience in the comments. But anyways, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. So I know you liked it. You can subscribe to my channel. I'm putting out new videos every Monday and sometimes Thursday. Leave me a comment. Tell me what you thought about all this going on right here. And as always, thank you so much for being here. Goodbye. Today I had my leftover pancakes for breakfast. Very good, you can put them in the toaster. Maybe I'll just like make pancakes and keep them in the freezer and then I can toast them, whatever. That would be fun.